My name is Eric Madison. Uh, I am a streetcar operator and I've been a member of the Board of Trustees since 2001, uh, but I've also been a member of the museum since 1998. When I first joined, I knew a little bit about trolleys, uh, not a lot. Uh, I remember before I moved here, I was watching, um, uh, it was a travel show log um, that was made back in the early 50s uh, and they did did Washington they were like you know come to Washington that sort of thing and they showed a streetcar you know going across an intersection and I knew enough about streetcars then to know that they usually had trolley poles and overhead wire well I see the streetcar go by and the poles down and I'm thinking well how is the streetcar moving you know I didn't know about conduit I didn't know about the restriction on overhead wire in the city so I've learned a lot uh, from being a member out here do here is really special. Um, I know there are a lot of other museums around the country and I think a lot of people are surprised that there are a number of streetcar and railroad museums but the fact that we've got two, you know, especially this one, but we've got two within an hour's drive of each other I think it's pretty neat. Uh, I grew up in Kentucky and there's nothing like this there. There are a couple of railroad museums but nothing like this. It's a rather unique experience. It's quite different from anything else you could do. We're not a railroad, and people do confuse the streetcar with a railroad because it runs on track, but it's quite a different experience. My name is Jim Hogan, and I'm a qualified operator in this museum. I've been out here uh, 34 years. So a lot of the, um, the growth of the region was built around, at least 100 years back, was built around the streetcar. If you go back 100 years to the World War I era, about 80% of travel in this region was by streetcar. That's really hard to understand today uh, because when the automobile came along, it just changed all that. There's more to it than just, you know, you standing here looking at this piece of machinery. Uh, you know, people wrote this, so it was actually part of the social fabric of the communities and the cities where they used to operate, much the same way that we think of Metro today. Even if you don't ride Metro or if you don't ride Metro bus, it has a relevance to the community in which it serves. We have people from around the world that come here who may have been to Blackpool, England, for example, and ridden this particular car. Uh, they may, may not have grown up in Washington. Even if they didn't grow up in Washington, they probably rode a streetcar somewhere else. And so this is familiar. It's kind of a, a nostalgia for them. The car that we run most of the time, especially in the winter, uh, is a uh, what's called a uh, PCC car from Toronto, Ontario. PCC was, the, that particular model was the standard uh, streetcar that ran in, in most all of America's large cities and a couple of the smaller ones from from roughly the end of World War II, although they came online in, in the late 1930s, until about the mid-1990s when they began to be replaced by, by more modern streetcars. My first experiences uh, uh, operating here was uh, at what we call Holly Trolley, which is at, at, uh, in uh, Christmas time, when Santa Claus rides in the streetcars. And we had probably 400 people uh, that, that evening. Streetcars are like automobiles, trucks, buses. Um, they have things that need to be lubricated. They have brakes that need to be adjusted. They have batteries that need to be charged or replaced. Um, a lot of mechanical things. Uh, there are fuses. And the same way you have a problem with a car or, or a bus, uh, you can have the same type of problem with a, a streetcar. You have to trace back 
to try and find the little part. And uh, I remember a number of years ago, we worked on it for like two months. And what it amounted to was a little relay switch that was an eighth of an inch off. We moved it back into position, tightened it, and the car worked fine. The earlier the streetcar, the simpler it is to work on. Uh, everything is a lot easier. Um, the closer you get to modern day, the more nightmares you have. When a long-term project is finished, it feels really good. It feels really good because uh, you've accomplished something. One of, the, one of the, the neat things about doing this kind of thing is you're, in a sense, an investigator trying to figure out what's wrong and why it went bad and then determine what you can do to uh, make it better and to fix things. The boat car is, a, is our most um, unique car, definitely, as far as appearance and shape and, and experience. It is uh, a British car built for Blackpool, England in 1934, and it was in service there for uh, many decades. I have always been interested in, in trains and streetcars, and growing up in the Netherlands, there was a lot of that, so I really had quite a bit of exposure to public transportation. This is car, uh, Berlin car number 5954, uh, was built, it operated in Berlin up until about the 1960s. Uh, it was built roughly in a group of cars roughly between 1924 and 1928, and it operated in Berlin uh, during World War II, and it finally ended up in East Germany, which in part was how it was saved because they just didn't get rid of their equipment, they ran it for a lot longer. Uh, but it survived uh, World War II, and so, you know, it's an interesting car to talk about. We don't run it, uh, it's not a runnable car, but we do, it does have a story because it would have been in uh, Germany during World War II, so, you know, it would have seen some things, it would have been witness to some things. So I know that at one point uh, there was, um, as part of the, as Nazism was gaining its momentum, uh, they did restrict uh, Jews from riding on streetcars at some point. So eventually, you know, if you were a Jewish person living in Berlin, you could not ride that car after a certain point. You know, that's, that's not a story that we normally tell here uh, because, you know, we have families here and we try to make it a positive spin. But, you know, that's the reality of uh, some of these vehicles. I mean, they have a mixed history, I guess if you could say, a storied past, if you will. But you know, that is one example of one way that you can interpret history through a certain piece of you know, equipment.